Alright, this is a continuation of a prop that I'm uh, building. It's a multi-piece prop and this is a portion of that right now. And one thing that I've been asked is, you know, what's the best hot end? What's the best delivery mechanics of getting the filament to the bed? And as you can see, this is printing now. This is PLA. I'm printing it 210C. And the best hot end for me is the least complicated, but the most efficient. So this hot end is allowing filament to come from the Bowden tube right over here, which comes from the extruder right over here. It's not hanging on the hot end at all. It's over there. Not moving at all. None of its weight is being transferred to the hot end. So it's right over there. So to get filament from here through here, delivered through the Bowden tube, because this is a moving piece, delivered to the hot end, pass through the heat sink, fan, and heat block. That's it. And down to the table. So, in reality, it's just getting filament from here to the tip of the nozzle. It's a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And troweling down to what's ever on the bed. So to start out, it trowels down to the print surface right here and then builds layer by layer on top of that. So it's one layer building on top of another layer until the print is finished. So every layer is drawing a picture of filament. That particular diagram, that particular picture is being fused to the layer below it. That's why they call it filament deposition modeling. It relies heavily on fusion. If your temperature of the nozzle is not hot enough for good fusion, but maybe it's good for flow, you still have a problem. Because not only do you need good flow, you need good fusion. Okay, so this particular head does just that. Nothing here is overkill. Nothing here is not needed. It's all required. All of this is required. Anything more than that is overkill. Okay, because again, this is printing right now. It's laying down filament according to a machine code, which is called a G-code. Some of that G-code applies to the extruder and its stepper motor. It applies to the hot end and what temperature. It applies to this stepper motor and where the X axis is at any given moment, including where the Y axis is at any given moment. Each layer is completed, then it moves up the Z axis based on a uh, Right here, this is a lead screw. I don't know if you can see it there. A lead screw that forces up the gantry. The gantry during a print only goes up. It never goes back down. It doesn't need to. That one layer is laid down through the X and Y. That's the workhorse. Then when that's completed, it repeats the same G code basically for the next layer. In no case does any of my G-code change during a print. If that first layer goes down perfectly, then the second layer should go down perfectly. And every layer after that goes down perfectly. The only difference is it's moved up one layer. It's now being fused to the layer just below it. So that's what's happening when it 3D prints. Another thing you notice here, there's no raft, no brim, 
no application of messy Elmer's glue purple glue stick because it's just not needed. I'm not saying some users don't require it. I don't. It's just not needed. So I wanted to be able to print in such a way that most of what I do here is not what everybody else does. Because my feeling is what everybody else does is not satisfactory for what I do. Another thing that I have that is unusual is this mirror. This is known to be flat from corner to corner, side to side, front to back. Okay? Giving that is what it is, then there's no need whatsoever for electronic leveling. No auto level is required because the surface that it prints on is flat. There's no highs or lows to compensate for. So the electronic gizmo is not needed. Once you've trammed the bed with the paper feeler gauge, that's what I use because it's old school, it works. I never change what doesn't work. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. So I tram the bed on a flat surface. It's trammed. And then it stays trammed the entire time the print is printing. It, it, that's just key. That's what it does. It still uses the original springs. Right there. You can see those aren't chunks of rubber. It's not the yellow springs because I know how to set up the, the original springs and the bed. All right. To show you real quick here, another benefit, non-heated bed. I don't have to heat the bed because there's so much time wasted heating. There's so many risks in heating. You, you risk warping. You constantly say, oh, how hot should I have the bed to support uh, adhesion? Well, don't heat it at all. Go this way here with what you see here and not have to worry about curling or separation or warping because you can see there all corners, all these corners are still touching the print surface. You can see it for yourself. I don't want anybody taking my word for anything. That's why I post videos. The blue tape has a purpose, not what other users think it's for, not what I use it for. I do it because it's contrast in color. You can see the filament. That's the skirt going all the way around. You can see the first layer going down almost transparent. So that gives you a contrast in color on, on the bed itself. Easy print removal. That's another benefit. Since I don't heat the bed, I don't have to wait for cooling for it to just pop off. Okay? I can literally, when this print is done, I can take it off, remove the print surface, put another mirrored, prepared mirrored on here with the tape ready to go and start a print within two minutes. And then I'll tape this mirror, the one with the print, to another location to remove the, the print itself without damage. There'll be no damage to the print at all. Okay, so while I'm doing that, the other print is started and it's continuing on, so it's one print after another. All right, so that's how I work. That's how it's done. This is why I do it in this fashion, because I've done over 3,500 STL files and counting. This is going to be added to that. These two items are going to go on a part I've already printed to add to the, the, uh, the, the project itself. All right, happy training, good luck. I mean, usually you wish luck to people that, that need it, you know, are going to be crossing their fingers. For me, I know this will print. Luck doesn't play any part. It's all based now on knowing what to do, how to set it up, and what G-code to use. All right. Happy printing in 2023 and well, well beyond. Also, the G code, I mean, sorry, the E step on all my printers is still at the original 